show. Hell yeah. Wyatt begins in like uh, five, four, three, two, one. Yo, welcome to Wyatt. And I'm your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Brr, woof, God damn it, woof, 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 woof. Hi, I said hi to all my YouTubers out there. If you like what you hear and if you like what you see, just click those subscribe buttons at the bottoms of your screens. Why you at it? Because I know you loves me. Give me some likes and leave me some comments as well. Hey, today's Wyatt asks the question, is love a religion? Yeah. See, your interest has already peaked. And our very special guest is going to answer that. He's going to tell you all about it. And all I can say right now is, let's get it on. So without further ado, Wyatt, I said Wyatt, welcomes the multifaceted and multi-talented author and actor, King Ohaji. Talk to me, baby. How the hell are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you, Wyatt? I am doing great, man. Listen, thank you so much for stopping by, Wyatt. Yeah. So, no problem. I'm so glad you had me on the show, so thank you. Oh, listen, my brother, my pleasure. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Philip Esteem. He's the maestro of prideindex.com for, for recommending you in prideindex.com. Celebrates the achievements of black and POC talent. So Phil- Thank you, Philip. Yes, shout out to Philip. Thank you so much. You know, I love Phil because, you know, he's a crazy one, <laughs> but there is a method to his madness, but he is such a great guy. Yes, and he is. He's doing he's He's doing so much for the community, and I really appreciate that. Okay, King. You know, man, I'm really excited to have you on the show because your story strongly and organically resonates with me on two main levels. First, um, we both had a strong and enduring love and bond with our deceased mothers. And also as authors, we write about the same subject matter. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, But I want to congratulate you on your newest novel. It's titled Liar. Let me do this because I love this title. It's L period, I period, A period, R period, or love is a religion. So it's Liar, Love is a Religion. Crafty title. Now, this is what I want you to do right now, because we're going to dig deep into it later. I want you to give us that 25 word elevator pitch about what it is. Now, look, I'm going to be counting off. So 25 words. 25 words. Or less than I'm going to count. So start. <laughs> Ooh, uh, 25 words. Um. I took a shot or two shots before this, so I don't know if I can count to 25 right now. But uh, <laughs> um, Liar, Love is a Religion. Basically, it's based off of my love life and the, the, the heartbreak that I encountered a few years ago and how I dealt with it. And, you know, just being gay and just trying to get through it. So that's basically what Love is a Religion is about. Hey, man, you did that really, really well. Thank you so much. (laughs) Now, man, look, Love is a Liar, Love is a Religion is getting like five-star raves. One reviewer stated, and I quote, this book was amazing. The author makes the characters so relatable that you will definitely know one of them in your personal life. I am looking forward to reading the next book, end quote. And another reviewer says this, and I quote, Woof, what an emotional read. A great book for me is one that is relatable and real. I can relate to being in Chase's situation before. I felt every part of his journey and his highs and lows in love. This author, meaning you, 
<laughs> did a great job of pulling me in and never letting go. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next in the in this roller coaster of love. I'm ready for the ride. In quote. Now, let me tell you something. I had to get that out. It makes me feel so. It just like balances and smooths me out. Now, look. Don't break your hand patting yourself on the back. But how does it feel to get positive as an author? How does it feel to get positive feedback? Honestly, why it feels amazing because when I put this out, I didn't know what to expect. I was really scared, honestly, because I'm talking about my life, my dating life. I'm such a private, closed off person mm -hmm. that I'm like, OK, like once I press submit and I couldn't take it back anymore, I'm like, it's out there. So to hear that people can actually relate to it and mm -hmm. they love it. And a lot of people said, hey, like you are actually taking thoughts out of my head or you are talking about my love life. Like it's an amazing feeling because I was so cautious and so scared about putting it out. And mm -hmm. once I did, I'm like, oh, so I'm not the only one who went through this. So, yeah, it was amazing. Listen, man, I commend you. I write a series called Nothing Can Tear Us Apart and Shattered is the latest uh, uh, sequel. And I know how you feel because, yeah. you know, even when you have finished it and you believe you've done an excellent job, after you press that submit button, as you would say, you say to yourself, I should have done this and maybe yeah. I should have done that. And, yeah. and, and, you know, how are they going to uh, receive it? And, yes. and, you know, uh, am I going to get great reviews? Um, but it is, very, very few people can write a book. So this is a major achievement. So kudos, my brother. And those reviews are very strong. So thank you. And also, you know, I realized that a lot of people, they can't, it's hard to write a book, but mm. to write a book about your personal life is even harder. Yeah. Because you are sharing some like dark stuff secrets that nobody really knows and to share that with the world and to have them relate and have them love it is just an amazing feeling mm -hmm. a feeling that i never thought like i never could even imagine honestly it's like my heart is full so i'm so thankful there you go there you go so and you have a lot to be proud of i'm telling you um Thank you. okay uh mr ohaji uh here's my question precisely what do you mean by love is a religion? Why is that important to you? Why should we embrace this uh, state of mind, this philosophy? Love is a religion. I've been holding on to this title for years. Uh -huh. And why it, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I had it in my head. And then life happened. And something told me, hey, like you need to apply this title to what happened to you in life. And then love is a religion, meaning to me is, I believe in love. Love is beautiful. Even when my friends say that they hate love or they have um, heartbreak or they're depressed over somebody or anything that my friends are going through, I tell them, hey, like never give up on love because love itself is beautiful. I believe in love. Love was created by God. And to me, love itself is beautiful. It's just the people that are involved in it that make it ugly. You know, when you get two people together and, you know, you get love in the middle of those two people, love is still beautiful, but the things that happen kind of make it ugly. And it's not love's fault, but we blame love a lot. And it's not love's fault at all. And I preach love. I love love. And that's why I said love is a religion because I believe in it and I will never give up on it. And I don't think people should give up on it either. Um, love is powerful. Love is changing. Love is motivational. Love, love is inspiring. It's, it's love can move mountains. Love can make you see past anybody's ugliness. Like love is just beautiful to me. So that's why I got that title. As Michael Jackson would say, oh, Tito, Tito, <laughs> give me a tissue. Please. <laughs> let me just do this. Let me, let me, let me do that. But, you know, but there was a time that I hated love. I'm not going to lie. I hated love. I did because, you know, I love, I, like, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a weakness, but honestly, in a world that's full of hate, 
uh-huh. is not a weakness at all. Like to be mm-hmm. able to wear your heart on your sleeve, to show that you love someone, to show that you care for someone, to show that you would give your all to someone. Uh-huh. That's beautiful. And you know what, man, don't change you. This is who you are. It's a beautiful thing. And and please don't change you because I know you're not. Um, OK, a little later, we're going to we're going to delve into Liar, Love is a Religion, and your other work titled From God to Mom to Me, a memoir. But for now, my brother, let's sashay down the quarters of time because our Wyatt audience is nosy like that. We like to know people's backstory. We like to get into folks' business. We just want to know it all. So where were you born and raised? I was born in Laurel, Mississippi. And I spent a few years in Mississippi, and I was raised in um, Patterson, New Jersey. Now, where, uh, King, where is Laurel, Mississippi? I think I've heard of it once before. If you watch HGTV, they have a show that's based on Laurel. Like, Laurel has oh. become famous because of that show. Um, it's close to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Okay. And, um, you know, I was very young, and so I don't really remember mm-hmm. anything about Mississippi. Like, I remember, like, some things, but... Right. When my mother moved us up to New Jersey, that that's where I remember a lot of things. Ah, uh-huh. got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, I love to ask my special guest this question because sometimes it's like a window into who he is as an adult. So here it is: What was King like as a little boy, a little nipper? Give us like three qualities, attributes that best describe you. Uh, Lil' King, he was shy. Um, he was very loving. Oh, that's and very, hmm, very scared. I don't know if that's a quality, but it's it's Mm -hmm. just I was very scared of the world being a gay boy and not knowing what gay was. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he was he was very loving, very giving, and very goofy at the same time. Very clumsy. I was very clumsy. Um, but yeah, I was a very like innocent and just lovable child. Like everybody loved me. I like that. I like that. All right. Okay. All right, now let us fast forward a bit. It's my understanding that you attended a performing arts school where you majored in drama and you were inducted into the Thespian Society. You performed in several musicals and won numerous acting awards. Such a high achiever. I try to be. Tell us about it, my brother. Tell us about it. Well, I went to Rosa Parks Arts High School in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, Okay. Some of my best years, um, I made the most amazing um, connections from going to that school. Okay. And it really broke me out of my shyness because I was such a, a shy kid and, you know, still trying to go through being gay and finding out what gay is and learning what gay is. And, you know, just being able to be surrounded by people that were like me. Um, because yeah. I honestly, I feel like the most creative people are in the LGBTQI community. Uh, so mm-hmm. big up to us. And it was just being able to be able, be able to be surrounded by people that were like me and thought like me and was creative like me. Mm-hmm. And just being in so many musicals. I remember I was in a musical called The Me Nobody Knows. And I played, mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's called The Me Nobody Knows. And I played a character named Lloyd. And he was a drug addict. Oh. And I just remember that that was one of the most challenging roles that I ever played because I'm, I'm sure like, I, I've, I've never been on drugs. I don't. Mm-hmm. So it's like I had to do a lot of research and, mm-hmm. you know, and just get deep inside of here. And mm-hmm. when I did, it's like I opened up something that I never opened before. And I became that drug addict on, on stage. I was like Whoa. a junior in high school. And it was one of the most amazing experiences that I ever experienced. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure because it was like you were the polar opposite of mm-hmm. who, who you really are. Exactly. And I also had to sing. 
Wow. Okay. So not a singer, <laughs> but um, it kind of um, just opened up like, hey, like I can actually sing. I could, I could hold a tune. Like, don't ask me now to sing, but I can, I, I can hold a tune. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, if you don't mind, King, let's move on. Let's move on rather to your mother who was a devout Christian who often wrote notes to God and scriptures in her notebooks. And I understand that she was a monumental influence in your writing. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> don't, don't worry. If you do, you, you do, because I, I, I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. And I'm so sorry for your loss as well, Wyatt. Um, Thank you. Appreciate that. No problem. But my mom, I can't even, words can even express how much she means to me still mm -hmm. to this day. And she's with me right now. Like I feel her presence. She was such a loving and giving person. And she showed me like, hey, like never give up. You know, life can throw you some horrible, some curve balls. Um, life can really... Life can really life. Life is life. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. You got that right. But she showed me, hey, like, keep going. Never give up. Never stop believing in God. Um, love people, no matter if they love you or not, but love people. Um, my mom will get the shirt off her back. She believed in God so much. She, um, the notebooks I found after she passed, this scriptures and stuff that she wrote down, letters and notes that she wrote to God and things that she had about me and my brother in her notebooks. Like, you know, she loved us and she would have these prayers about us in the book. Um, just so much that my mother did. She would, my mother, honestly, she would drive me to high school every day when I went to Rosa Parks. She would drive me to school. I lived on the other side of town. So she would drive me to school every single day because she didn't want me catching public transportation because I would have to get on like two buses to get to school. And she wanted me to go to one of the best schools. So even when I remember it was a time when she was like, hey, she was like, my vision is getting blurry. Like when she was driving me to school one day, she was like, you know, and I keep having these headaches and, you know, but she kept trying and kept driving me to school. And lo and behold, she had a brain tumor and they didn't even know it. Oh, no. And she still tried to drive me to school. And even when she was in the hospital and she had to have surgery to get the tumor out, she still made sure that I was able to get to school. Like she had people, she had my stepdad make sure that I can um, get to school. She even asked one of her church friends that I stay with them because it was closer to my high school. So my mother always trying to make a way. She always gave her last. She was just an amazing, a wonderful woman, a queen, she's my twin. She's my everything. Uh, you know, first of all, thank you for sharing that, King. And I feel the same way because, uh, you know, my father died when I was very young. I really didn't know him. Oh. So it was just yeah. myself and my mom. And we had this special, unique bond and relationship. And when I lost her unexpectedly, I mean, it, it really gutted me and you know she was responsible for me you know doing the journalism thing doing the author thing and she instilled in me to no matter how tough things get get up off of your ass and yes. keep yes. soldiering keep soldiering on yes. and I, I, I that's another reason why I wanted to have you on because our story resonates She's also with me, you know, every yeah. time I write a book and finish it, it's like she's smiling and I can feel yeah. it. So I totally get it. Yeah. I get yeah. it. I get it. And again, I'm so sorry for the loss of your mom. It's like, thank you. Fathers are amazing. Yes. But it's just something about mothers that mm -hmm. like, even when I came out as gay, like she firstly, she took it hard, but. She was like, you know what? She was like, you're my son. She was like, I love you regardless. She I, was like, there was nothing that anybody can tell me about you that will make me think differently about you. She was like, I love you for you. And that, 
Amazing. And, and you know what? I, I really believe that mothers are even more important to gay, same gender loving yes. boys. Yeah. I, I can't explain it. I just, yeah. I just feel it. I just think fathers are important, of course, yeah. but yeah. I just think that the bond is 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 more intense, um, maybe a little more unique. I don't know than a straight son and his mother. I, you know, I, I don't want to get letters saying you're wrong. Okay, don't want them, <laughs> but that's how I feel about it. So. You know, I realize that everybody's um, relationships with their mother or father is different, but it's like for us being gay, it's like you said, it's just something that's, that's, that's different between mm -hmm. a gay son and his mother. And the fact that mothers know before the sons even tell them. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a connection that I can't even explain. And when your mother accepts you, it's like, you feel like you can conquer the world. You can do anything in life. Your father accepts you, yes, that's, a, that's amazing. Cause you know, straight men is, is kinda, that's a big thing. But right. it's like, when your mother accepts you, it's like, I can conquer the world. I can do whatever I want to do. And I can be successful. Right. Off of this one person accepting me. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I feel you. And King, you turn, your mother's notebooks into your first book from God to mom to me, a memoir. So yes. tell us about that. Well, after my mom passed in 2019 on her birthday, mm -hmm. I remember I was in Charlotte, I was on a layover and, um, you know, I spoke to her that day. I said, Hey, happy birthday, mom. She was in a lot of pain. She was suffering from lupus and, you know, just dealing with that. And I just remember her saying, uh, are you coming to see me? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, mom, I'm coming to see you tomorrow. I was like, I promise I'll come to see you tomorrow. And I was in my hotel room around nine or 10 o'clock at night. I got a call saying that she passed. And I just remember being on my hotel room had a balcony and I remember wanting to just jump from it. And I was just crying and crying and crying. So my hotel management came up to my door and asked, was everything all right? Because, you know, I guess the hotel guests could hear me crying and just going through the motions. And I remember just, um, that was in Charlotte. So the first flight out to New Jersey, I, I took it <clears throat> that morning and I was going through her stuff and I found these notebooks. And it, it was a bunch of stuff because, you know, I'm trying to, um, and the funeral, I had to pick out what she had on, right. all that stuff. So it was a lot of stuff that was on me. Um, because my stepdad, who is my dad, like he's the only man that I know that's my father. He's an amazing man, by the way. Um, so my dad, it was a lot for him to handle. Yeah. So I wanted to be able to take some of the 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 burden off of him mm -hmm. and help him play. And so he gave all the responsibility to me. And I just remember going through her, her, her things and I found these three or four, like it was like three or four notebooks. I just started opening them and reading them. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, my mom was writing letters to God. Wow. My mom was just amazing. Like she even had a, uh, she put her hand on a notebook and she drew like a little sketch of her hand on a book and just things like that. And, I was motivated. I'm like, oh my God, like, let me turn this into a book. Like it just came to me because my mother always felt like she never did enough in life. Uh, and I wanted to show her like you did more than enough in life. You inspire so many people just by being courageous, just by not giving up, just by keep, you know, her belief in God and never giving up on God. No matter what she went through, she still believed in God. She could be in so much pain and she's praising God, you know, and just to have that kind of strength and that courage and that faith that inspired me to write from God to mom, to me, and some of the scriptures and stuff she wrote, some of the, um, inspirational, uh, quotes that she wrote, I put in the book 
And the title came to me that day when I saw, um, when I saw the notebooks, because I felt like, you know, God gave her the words and God gave her the words to say, right? So that's from God. And then when I found the notebooks, I felt like that was like a blueprint for me. So it was like from mom to me. Mm -hmm. So God gave her the words and the thoughts from God. Then it went to my mother and then I found the notebooks and then it went to me. So that's where I got the title. Whoa, man, that is, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Well, King was writing, you know, put, putting the book together, publishing it. Was that cathartic for you? Oh, it was the most challenging time in my life because like I said, I'm a private person mm -hmm. and I'm putting all this stuff into this book. Things that I never even told any, anyone, things that I kept between my mother and I, I didn't share everything because sometimes, most of the time, I feel like you have to keep things private to keep them special. Yep. Or some things I didn't even mention in the book, but for the majority, I revealed a lot. And um, it was complicated and just trying to um, go through, you know, your traditional publishing and all that stuff. It was, it was a challenge, but I made it through and... But then, honestly, that idea came to me in 2019. The book was published on my mother's birthday in 2020. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, so it was like, I didn't even plan it like that. But it just, but it just happened. Ah, uh, I like that. I like yeah. that. So God is amazing. You know, I got to thank God. Um, if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't even be here. All the things I went through in life and just challenges, but... You know. Being her, being able to get through everything and her belief in God actually made me believe in God even more. So I'm thankful for God and I'm thankful for my mother. There you go. There you go. Um, let's move on to L period, I period, A period, R period, liar. Love is a religion. Do we have to? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, another reason why I'm glad you're here, because like, like I said earlier, we have we write about similar subject matter because in Nothing Can Tear Us Apart, it's about, you know, abiding love, love can conquer all, um, you know, because I believe in true love as well and fighting for it. So the title is it is quite clever is a slick acronym yes it is. you sort of flip the word liar on its head yeah. so why that particular title and there's got to be a meaning behind it well basically i chose liar because it's it's that kind of title like you'd be like like it grabs people attention mm -hmm. right so if i do that love is a religion people are like just look at it like okay like whatever but just to <laughs> yeah. see liar People are like, oh my God, like, what is this? And it's amazing. I have a book right here, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so right. Do it, baby. <laughs> this title, Liar, is it will grab your attention and people will probably pick it up and be like, okay, like, let me find out what this is about. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's what I believe in. Like, I believe in love and um, it fits so perfect with my life. It fits so perfect with, with the subject matter in the book. And that's what made me apply it to my life story. Well, not my life story, but like my dating life. So that's why I chose it. Well, give us, you've given us the 25 uh, word elevator pitch, but let's, let's broaden it out. Give us the synopsis. Basically, what is this novel about? Hmm. 25. Oh God, twenty-five. Um, no, you don't need twenty-five. You can you can do a thousand words if you want now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because with this book, it's it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, but this book is about um, I met someone and I fell for them. It was after my five-year relationship. I was in a relationship with a guy for five years oh, okay. that I loved very much. Him and I are still very close and still best friends, but. Um, we broke up. It took years for me to get over him. Honestly, yeah. like we broke up in 2012. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't meet the new guy until like uh, 2015, 16. Mm-hmm. So I fell for this guy. And he was a, he was amazing. He was, he kind of reminded me of my ex, but then he did things that I never even experienced before. So it took it to like the next level. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, oh my God, like this is the one, like a beautiful guy, um, generous, giving, thoughtful, just amazing. And everything was going right, right? Mm-hmm. Then Valentine's Day just popped up. I had a spa date. Um, All right. Prayer for him. I had flowers, everything. And uh, I didn't hear from him on Valentine's what not at all what the hell yeah well was he hurt <laughs> did was he hurt what happened to him well he was still on his ex and i should have known because he just had broke up with his ex like months before we started really like getting like heavy oh, and but i wanted this guy for a while and so you know i just overlooked some things that really was my fault i should have like Red flags. I, I should have known. <laughs> yeah. But me not really dating and being out of a five-year relationship and it's been years since I really dated and really, and really liked someone, mm-hmm. I didn't know how to handle that. I'm like, oh my God, like I really like this dude. Um, but let me look over this. Like, okay, he just broke up with his ex like a few months ago, but let me look over this. So yeah, he went back to his ex. And I didn't know how to deal with that at that time because you're thinking like, what did I say? What did I do? Yeah, tough. Did I, did I say too much? Did I not say enough? Was I there too much? Was I not there enough? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you just ask yourself these things. And, you know, I don't blame him. And, you know, people think I'm so crazy. That was like, why are you not blaming him? Like, cause we all deal with things differently. Um, we met at the wrong time. Right. Um, and things that I allowed to happen was my fault because, you know, we have control over what we do and what mm. we do. Mm. And I allow things that I shouldn't have. Right. doesn't make him a bad person. Um, but I blamed, I never really blamed him, but I blamed myself and I had to forgive myself mm-hmm. because honestly, there's no rule book. There's no playbook to life. There's no rule book, a playbook to love. But when you love someone, you love someone and you don't talk negative about the person. So I never talked negative about any ex that I had only had two, by the way. Right. <laughs> I never talked negative about my exes because, you know, I love them, still have love for them. Mm-hmm. So I would never speak negative about anyone that made me feel such an amazing, like made me feel so amazing at that time. So. Yeah. And, and you know, that's the right approach, King, because it's just negative energy. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's it. That is, and it just makes how you feel even worse. Yeah. So And why you have to forgive yourself. A lot of people like we walking around and we haven't forgiven ourselves. We've forgiven others, but we haven't forgiven ourselves mm-hmm. for what we allow. We haven't forgiven ourselves for the negative thoughts we thought about ourselves. We haven't forgiven ourselves for the hurt that we inflicted on top ourselves during those dark times. Mm-hmm. You have to forgive yourself. You have to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, no problem. Oh, okay. Let's dissect your main character, Chase. I love that first name, Chase Kelly. But first, I've got a bone to pick with you. What's the ball? I got a real big bone to pick with you. Let me tell you what. Let me let me tell you what it is. Okay. You see, the name of one of my main characters in Shattered, his name is Wesley Kelly. So where do you get off stealing the last name? <laughs> see, <laughs> your 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 guy's Chase Kelly, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chase Chase Kelly. Yeah. Mine is Wesley Kelly. So what's up with that, my brother? <laughs> Look, great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. Yes, Kelly. Kelly is just 
Honestly, it's such an amazing le- name, honestly. Mm-hmm. And my sister's name is Kelly. And oh, cool, cool. I just really thought of it. I'm like, you know what? Kelly is just, and spell it K-E-L-L-E-Y. Just mm-hmm. like, it just hits different. Mm-hmm. And as far as Chase goes, mm-hmm. honestly, Chase was, um, I had a YouTube show that I won't talk about because I hate it. Oh. I want really? people to actually to find it. Okay. But I had a YouTube show and, um, uh, the name that I used to go by was Chase Kelly, right? Okay. And so um, after the YouTube show ended and I hated it and all that stuff, I put Chase Kelly to bed. And I was oh. like, I will never bring him back up. Okay. And then this title came to me, Liar. And I'm like, you know, I need to bring Tra- Chase Kelly back. And the whole reason why I even named myself Chase is because I always chase things. I always chase what I want. I never give up. Uh, I will never give up on anything that I want. I chase and I go uh, after it. So that's why I always say, hey, my name is Chase. Ah, uh, <laughs> clever, clever, clever. Yes. I, I like the way you think. Okay. You. Um, okay. Thank- How much of you is and is not Chase Kelly? Hmm. Percentage-wise. Chase Kelly is a good 70%. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then other things are just added, but Chase is is basically me. Um, But a lot of things I added in the book is just for, you know, Mm -hmm. drama. (laughs) You gotta gotta have that rich, rich, dope drama. Yes, yes. But to be real, honestly, when I went back and I read my own book, mm-hmm. I hated Chase. Why? Interesting. I hated him. Why did um, you hate him? Because it it took me back to a moment where I was so weak. I was so... Oh, okay. I let a lot of things happen. Yeah. And the person that I am today... Uh-huh. Mm-mm. Right. <laughs> but mm-hmm. honestly, I had to go through that so I wouldn't allow that to happen in 2024, if that makes sense. So it made me stronger. Uh I'm glad I went through it, but going back to that time and reading my own book, I don't hate the book. I just hated what I allowed at that time. So that's why I wasn't really like reading Chase Kelly. I'm like, oh my God, like Chase, like wake up, like Chase, sit your ass down, like Chase, like just stop. So, you know, I said that while I was reading my own book. Mm. Well, you know what? That makes sense. And But, the, you know, the important thing about life is that you're going to make mistakes, but learn from them Yes. and say, OK, I did this. I'm not going to do it again. Yes. You know, it's evolution. Yes. Evolution. Evolution. That's exactly what it is, why it's evolution and actually going back and you know how some people will write and they try to change it to make them look like they're strong or try to change it. I I wanted it to be real. I wanted it to be relatable. And when a lot of people read my book and they text me and they send me messages like, this is me, I am chased. It made me realize like, hey, I'm not the only one that let love kind of blind them. Right. And, you know, try to just allow a lot of things to happen just so you can keep this person in your life. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the important thing, everybody, is to learn from your mistakes yes. and not repeat the same behavior, you know, because if, <laughs> because if you're doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results the same over results. and over again. Yes. Yes. And you got to realize your value and realize oh. that you are priceless Oh God! and that nobody in this world can oh. love you like you. And until you see the love that you have within yourself for yourself, nothing else will change. You have to love yourself first. Then you can love others. And that's, and that's true. Once you love yourself, the true love, the real love, you won't allow a lot of stuff to happen. I am so glad we're having this conversation because... <laughs> I've been, I've had uh, periods of my life, particularly where relationships were concerned, where mm-hmm. I got the short end of the stick 
And some of it was my own doing, not being able to say no, not loving yourself. And I am a strong proponent of counseling. Therapy yes. saved therapy yeah. saved my life. Yes. It made me understand myself, my true value, my true worth. Mm -hmm. And I've also learned that no is such a wonderful, powerful word. So powerful. Oh, it's liberating. It's freedom is liberating <laughs> because sometimes to protect yourself, mm -hmm. you got to tell somebody no, no, no. And you know what? That's my favorite word now. Um, if the energy is not right, I could be out at a party, at a gathering, and my friends ask me to stay. I say no, about to go home. Mm -hmm. Um People ask me out on a date if, if I'm just not feeling it. No, 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 no. Because you got to protect yourself. You got to protect your energy. You just can't be out in any and everywhere. You just can't have yourself out there because people will beat you onto you and they will take your energy and they will try to drain you by everything that you got. They're energy vampires. They just yes. they just yes. suck it all out of you like suck like all like out. like Barnabas with. Mm -hmm. You know, take the blood out of blood out. And you wonder why you're so tired. You're like, oh my God, like, I'm so tired. Like, I have nothing to give. That's because you just gave it all to someone who was not even appreciative. Somebody who's going to come back when you fill back up. And I'll say one more thing about this. And you know what? When that happens, that person doesn't respect you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Respect is more important. Someone respecting you is more important than someone liking you. Yes. 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 I can't even express like you just hit the nail on the head. Like I know I took it back with that saying, but you just, just hit it. Right there. Right, yeah. right there. Respect yeah. me. And if you want to like me, cool. But respect is so much more important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, look. You were at Artists in the Afternoon, which yes. was uh, presented by the Esteem Awards. It was in Atlanta this past uh, Labor Day. So yes. tell us what was what is Artists in the Afternoon, this special event, and give us a full Monty about it. Well, Artists in the Afternoon, you have a bunch yeah. of artists like myself, authors, poets, mm -hmm. just getting together. Um, we have our books and everything available. We have different tables set up where people can come by. They can ask, ask us questions. They can take pictures with us. You have different panels where people can actually come and listen to each person talk about their book and their lives and why they wrote what they wrote. And then um, after each panel session, you have people to come by the actual tables and they actually get to speak to the people that were on the panel. And they get a better understanding of that person and they can buy their book and they can support them and they can take pictures. And it's a, it's an amazing um, experience. I'm so glad that Philip actually invited me and he um, he's such a sweet guy. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful experience. I met a lot of authors. Uh, I bought some books and learned a lot. So I'm really glad that I came. Well, I will be there next year. Please, Cole. Yes, yes. Please, 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 please. Yeah. I hope that I'll be back next year. Definitely. Cool. I, I've read somewhere that you refer to yourself as a hopeful romantic. What is that all about? Hopeful to me is um, honestly just never giving up. On love, I know a lot of people say hopeless, but hopeless just sounds so, to me, yeah. pathetic. Like hopeless sounds so weak yeah. to me. Hopeful means that you will never lose hope and know that what's for you is for you and nobody can take what's for you. Um, mm -hmm. Just having hope means it, it's so powerful. When you're hopeless, to me, that's the op opposite of being hopeful. So having hope, having faith, and just believing that it's going to work out, that's powerful. Mm. It is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my friend, what are the takeaways from liar, love is a religion? What is the 
the major message you want your readers to get from your book? Don't let anybody walk over you. Realize yourself, um, realize your self-worth. Um, mm -hmm. Never doubt for a second that you aren't worthy of anything because you are more than worthy than you can even imagine. Don't ever let anybody question, make you question your self-worth. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody ever make you go where your esteem is like, your self-esteem is in the gutter. Right. Always remember your power. You are your power. Nobody can take that away from you. And always remember, now this is the, this is the big thing. Like we blame so many people for a lot. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if we blame ourselves, it opens up a whole new world. Because like I said earlier, we allow a lot of things. So instead of blaming others, you need to blame yourself and then forgive yourself and never let it happen again. It's the, people only do what we allow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I they only agree. do what we allow. And then we go ahead and we blame them, but we allowed it. You know what, King, I could do a whole nother show on that. And I think I probably will because you're, you're absolutely correct. And I really believe that when we do that, we're getting something out of it. There's mm -hmm. something inside ourselves. We're getting some type of payoff or payoff because we do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is that it may hurt to blame yourself and it's going to hurt because you're going to look back and be like, damn, like I really allowed that shit to happen. Like I'm really allowed this. But when you look back at that, it's going to um, make a change within yourself. And then you're not going to allow it to happen again because you're going to realize that you are amazing. No matter how a person treats you, they can treat you like crap, but it doesn't take away from your self-worth just because they can't see it, just because they can't appreciate it, or just because they're not ready. A lot of people aren't ready. You know, they're getting into these relationships and they're not ready. Sometimes, uh -huh. you know, especially in the gay world, I can't speak for the heterosexual world because I'm not straight. <laughs> but I know that they go through the same things, right? Um, but Sometimes, you know, in the gay world, we just jump from person to person to person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't do that because it's, it's, it's meaningless to me. Like, right. it's a waste of time. And to me, it's not special anymore because if I'm giving all this love that I have within here, which is a pot of love, right, to just any and everybody, it's not special anymore. Uh, it's not special anymore. So when mm -hmm. we, so when they meet that real one person, like, like, like that real one, they don't know how to handle it a lot of times because they're so used to being treated a certain kind of way. They're used to that, that toxic stuff, um, that mm -hmm. unhealthy stuff, that anxious love, that, um, abusive love. That's what they're used to. And honestly, if somebody is abusing me, whether it's physically, verbally, it's not love. Mm -mm. But that's what people consider love. Sometimes they consider abusive love, love, and it's, that's not love. That toxic love, that's not love. That trauma bonding, that, that's a whole nother thing. You know, we bond with people mm -hmm. off of trauma. Yeah. And people just need to realize the red flags. They need to realize the gaslighting. They need to realize the love bombing sometimes. Um, people just need to realize a lot of things. But I know I'm going all over the place. No, 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 you're not. Um, mm -hmm. But when you meet that real person, a lot of people, they, they don't know how to handle it or they feel like it's not real. Um, mm -hmm. No one is perfect. No, I'm not perfect by any means. And I don't want to be perfect. But what I realize is that I am a real one. And that's why, honestly, I haven't really 
been out here just dating any and everybody because to right. me, it's not special when you do that. A lot of people just trying to have fillers, just trying to, because they're bored, or oh, well, let me go out on a date or, you know, oh, he's buying, so let me just go out. And you're wasting people's time. People that really, truly want to have someone. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us, we're not ready. And that's how people get hurt. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we don't realize that when people hurt us, it's not us. It's their childhood trauma. It's their past that really is making them hurt us. They don't know how to handle that. That's where the therapy comes in. That's why you have to go to therapy. You mm-hmm. have to talk to someone. You have to get over that childhood trauma or whatever trauma you've been through before you try to go to the next one before you try to go to that real person, because the real person is ready for you. He's waiting. He's ready to spoil you, love you, take care of you, and see you through the good, the bad, the ugly. That real person is waiting, but you can't have them until you are past your traumas. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. My brother, where can we purchase copies of Liar, Love is a Religion, and From God to Mom to Me, a Memoir? You can purchase both books, which I have. This is From God to Mom to Me, a Memoir, from Amazon. And also, Liar, you can purchase both books from Amazon. Okay, social media information, because people are going to want to talk to you and connect with you. Definitely, definitely. And I look forward to talking to everyone that gets in contact with me. Uh, my DMs are open. And um, although I'm a closed off person, once you read this book, you're going to understand more. Once you read this book, you're definitely going to understand more as well. Um, you can also find this book in Barnes and Noble and um forgot where else, but somewhere else as well. But it's been like years since I wrote this one. But um, you can find both books on Amazon. Oh, your your social media, your Twitter, mm-hmm. and give us Twitter. your Twitter and all that great stuff. Okay, my Twitter is at King underscore Ohaji. So that's at K I N G underscore Ohaji O H A J I, and Instagram is the same King underscore Ohaji, and TikTok is the same King underscore Ohaji. I think that's all my social media. All right. Mr. King Ohaji, thank you for stopping by Wyatt, man. This has been enlightening, enlightening, entertaining, electrifying, excellent, say all of the ease. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. It has been amazing, Wyatt. And I feel like I connected with you as well, just getting to know you even more. So I made a new friend. <laughs> you know what, man? I feel the same way. Um you are an incredible talent, incredible Thank person, you. and all I can say is, you know, you're 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 more than two or three five bags of chips. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, wife. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. So y'all, there you have it. You can find the official Wyatt podcast page at WyattEvans.com, the go-to a destination for LGBTQ plus news, features, commentary, and entertainment. WyattEvans.com is visited by more than 100 countries on the regular. All I can say to that is, hey, baby. And at WyattEvans.com, you'll find my smoking hot, H-A-W-T hot, Nothing Can Tear Us Apart series of novels, And as you just saw on the top, the newest installment is called Shattered. I said Shattered. And y'all, Shattered is full of, of, of action, danger, intrigue, sexually charged situations, passion, and all of the wonderful elements that you're used to in the Nothing Can Tears Apart series of novels. So get your new copy of Shattered. Now, you can follow me, your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans, all across social media, and poof, is right there for you to peruse, like TikTok and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. 
And if you have any comments or whatever, you can hit me up at quietonair at gmail.com. So until next time, y'all, woof, goddammit, woof, 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 woof. I said woof. <laughs>